guys, I'm Matt. I'm Mike. And we're from the Coin Show Podcast, and today we wanted to talk to you guys about something. Today, the United States Mint uh, issued the following press release. The 2020 end of World War II 75th anniversary American Eagle one-ounce gold proof coin and the end of World War II 75th anniversary American Eagle silver proof coin were released for sale at noon Eastern time on November 5th. Release of these coins resulted in the highest website traffic we've ever experienced, which greatly exceeded our expected capacity. You don't say. This high volume caused in website instability and customers encountered error messages and in some cases were unable to purchase their desired product. Most cases. Due to extremely high demand, the American Eagle Gold Proof Coin became unavailable by 12.07 p.m. We... We are pleased with the initial demand, but are also in the process of evaluating the various customer concerns and system constraints and or failures we experienced. We want to assure you that the United States Mint remains committed to providing the highest possible level of customer service and regret any inconvenience or frustration this buying experience caused. Oh, so I have a feeling that this video is going to be about the buying experience and the frustration that it caused. <laughs> There are so many angry people tonight that uh, tried at noon today to log on to buy either the gold uh, V75 Privy Eagle or the silver V75 Privy Eagle that just weren't able to do it. Did you, you did you try it all today? I did. How long? Are you did kidding you? Me? I tried. Uh, Kevin was trying. Bob was trying. I got on the website today at 1147 and it was already crashing. That's like 12, 13 minutes before they were even supposed to release. And the website was already crashing. This Bob was actually on the website at 11.58. He was on the website and was ready to load it into his cart. All that kind of stuff oh, was yeah. ready to go. Got shut out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you reload the page and it says, oops. Yeah. Well, you click the refresh button. Yeah. It's, I think right above it says, oops, we've experienced an error. And then there's yeah. a refresh button right underneath yeah. it. And oops, then you click it. We've experienced an error. Yeah. Oops. And then you, you've just been kicked out. <laughs> and then you click it. And then you click it. And then you click it. And nothing ever happened. Well, oh no. What would happen is you would go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. After, if, if it ever loaded again. What it, would happen would be. <laughs> that's pretty much everybody that tried to buy these coins today. I, I get the feeling. I've heard from a lot of collectors that they are just absolutely turned off by this. Um, you know, they feel like a lot of the big dealers just sent hundreds and hundreds of people to try to buy these coins and shut them out, uh, which may or may not be the truth. I don't really know. I don't associate with a lot of those big dealers that do that. Um, I was able to get a couple uh, through my various sources. Uh, but, you know, it's just one of those things that I wish they would do it different. And I wish that they would put more thought into these things when they do them. I mean, if you put out a coin with a mintage of 1,945 pieces, you're going to create the demand for this. These coins sold today at $2,600. And by this afternoon, we're selling, just on confirmation emails alone, at over $10,000 a piece in just a few hours. It is absolutely insane. I have no idea why they would do it. And I have, I have no pity for them in their little press release they put out that they weren't expecting such high volume. Don't do stuff like this and you won't have to deal with stuff like this. Well, okay. So, you know, clearly my mom always taught me that if you're just going to complain about something, all you're doing is complaining. So, I mean, honestly, what would you have done different is some one something that we'll have to address. However, okay, you know, here's the thing is that, is that, um, everybody got shut out and there is this huge inflation of this coin. So, I mean, that's what I think is what everybody is furious about. Well, yeah, the silver and coins, that... the silver coins themselves were selling for $83. Uh, and on the secondary market with confirmation emails alone, we're trading at over $600 a piece this afternoon. Now, just, just on the email. My word. Mark my words. These have peak and fall. Oh, they're pump and dumps all the way. Right. It's like, and that's the thing is the people that buy these, 
the the second owners of these, or in sometimes some cases the third, because the second's going to be the dealer. Right. The the third owner of these is going to end up getting just absolutely hosed on this deal, because he wants to own something that's so exclusive and is and is just absolutely booming, and and people are going to put you know all the hype behind it and stuff like that. Look, my suggestion as far as one, what what I would do different, first. Don't offer the gold and the silver at the same time. Yeah, that was terrible. 1945 mintage of something. Why are you offering that at the same time as anything else, period? Because that alone is enough to crash your website. Yes. When you offer something. Personally, I couldn't afford the gold coin. I wasn't going for it. I wanted the silver coin and should have had a reasonable chance at it had the site not been completely crashed by gold diggers. (laughs) You know, that, that we're looking to buy a flip opportunity. Yeah. Hey, look, look, I know somebody that was offering me three grand above what I paid for it. If I would, you know, if I would just give them a confirmed, you know, I have it. Yeah. For the gold no coins. Words, no nothing. Just put it in the cart, charge it and go. And, you know, hey, I'm not opposed to making a quick couple of grand. Right. But, but I mean, if that's what this is all about then I think the Mint may need to rethink this because are they doing it to enrich the dealers or are they doing it to to uh, create something for collectors? And if they're doing something to create for collectors, then quit getting them hosed with the way that the secondary market is working out on these. Yeah, I agree so, with you completely. So to that end, I would say, first off, separate the releases from the silver and the gold. You're not going to deliver them tomorrow anyway. So what is the big deal with having to release them both on the same day? Yeah, I don't know. Second, more importantly, okay, and this goes back to the text of of the thing and why I kind of, you know, got a little, uh, due to extremely high demand, you know, it's like, it's like release of these coins resulted in the highest website traffic we have ever experienced, which greatly exceeded our expected capacity. Now, this is like the third release in a row. Oh, yeah, every year they do one. It's crazy. Absolutely crashed their website. Yeah. The third one in a row. So it can't be unanticipated. It can't be a surprise to them at this point. Um, During the period when we had an interim or a... a, a, a an yeah, acting interim mint director. director. Yeah. I'm sorry? The yeah, acting, acting mint director. director. Thank you. Uh, you know, when we had that, I could understand some of that. We have a mint director now. Yeah. You know, the Mint is is a very profitable enterprise and has run really, really well, but for things like this. You have all these resources, um, and the website is what is, is pulling you down. Well, I mean, there are not too many websites in the world that you can you can throw half a million people at all at once that will be fine. I mean, you know, aside from some of these gigantic Google, Facebook, you know, websites out there, there are not too many websites that can handle that kind of traffic, and they know it. And they deal with this at least once a year uh, for the last two or three years, maybe four years now. They put out something that just absolutely annihilates their website, and it's not like it's new to them. This is getting old. I'm tired of it. Most of the collectors I talk to are tired of it. You know, mm-hmm. just, just make them, you know, c- cater to your customer base and not not hose your customer base and hope they keep coming back. That's what, that's what killed a lot of other collectibles over the years. Well, so. they're looking at it and going, Hey, it's, you know, it's not us. Yeah. Right. We're not doing this. And it's like, actually indirectly you are. Mint anything of with a vintage of 19, 1945 pieces and see what happens. So for, for the coin show podcast, I'm Matt. And I'm Mike. And, and, we'll, and we'll talk to you next time on the coin show. We'll, we'll rain at you later. <laughs> Rant on brother. Rant on brother.